Welcome back, everyone. As the Republican-controlled House prepares to vote now to repeal the health care law today, there's still a lot of debate over the law's actual benefits and, more importantly, the costs. People are not stupid. If people say we're passing a bill that is going to expand coverage to 33 million Americans who haven't had it, and this is going to reduce the deficit, they know you're talking out of your hat or that you've jiggled the numbers in such a way as to make it look like that. The argument against this deficit reduction is so clear, is so obvious, so easy to make. If Republicans can't make it, they don't deserve to be the opposition. But not everyone agrees the cost of the bill outweighs the benefits. Louisiana Congressman and Vice Chair of the GOP Doctors Caucus, John Fleming, and California Congressman and former Insurance Commissioner for the State of California, John Garamendi, join me now for a fair and balanced debate. Good morning, Congressman. Good morning, Good morning Gretchen. All right, we heard Charles Krauthammer there, uh, Congressman Fleming. He said Republicans should be able to defend this extremely well about the costs. How do you go about doing that? Well, Gretchen, you may recall that during the debate uh, on this health care reform that the Democrats cooking this behind closed doors went back and forth to the CBO asking how they could make this work. Ultimately, what it came out to be was a Disney fantasy of accounting where they took out big pieces of the cost and put them into other bills where they have double accounting of the savings. Uh, from Medicare, which will not even occur to begin with. Mm -hmm. And then also they do something really strange, and they manipulate the budget window by creating 10 years of revenue against six years of expenses. Now, wouldn't Roger Ailes love to run Fox that way? Uh, <laughs> and then finally, the Class Act, which is a long-term care opt-in that Americans can choose. It's not mandatory. Uh, the premiums will go in. Mm -hmm. uh, for long-term care, okay. but then they will actually be spent right. immediately for health care. Okay. And I, I, yes. I, you're doing a great job proving your point. I got to get Congressman Garamendi sure. in here, though. So, so Congressman, how do you respond to Charles Krauthammer, who says, "Hey, when you add 33 million people to the to the uh, medical, you know, uh, list, Coverage. who's going to pay for sure. it?" Well, those 33 million are principally, almost all of them, going to be private insurance. They're not going to be on the federal. Uh, programs, Medicare and Medicaid, but the Medicare and Medicaid programs will see prevention as part of the program. We all know, and certainly uh, our, my friend Dr. Fleming knows, that if you are able to do prevention, that is early care, for example, <coughs> diabetes or uh, uh, blood pressure, you will be able to reduce the cost of medical services over time. Mm -hmm. And so those kinds of reductions at the f on those programs that are federal are real. <laughs> Now, the 33 million are almost entirely in the private insurance sector, and those will not be on the federal uh, budget issues. It is the Congressional Budget Office that has made the estimate that this program right. will save $230 billion over the next nine years. Yeah, but, but now, how they come to that conclusion and go back and forth on it, but that is the conclusion of the independent. Mm -hmm. Nonpartisan uh, Congressional Budget Office. All right. Uh, we got bogged down in, in numbers there, and unfortunately, we're out of yeah. time uh, discussing it, but we will all pay attention today to see exactly how this plays out in the House and then what the Senate does with this thing. Congressman, thanks very much for your time this morning. Thank you, Thank Gretch. you. Steve, Brian? All right, uh, Gretch, thank you very much. One